Hi, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about some arena stuff. So I guess like more fundamentals and like how to how to build better teams. But really, I'm going to be going through like an evaluation of the three stars and like how they how they fit into arena. I think it's very important to know these fundamentals because like a lot of people are not going to have the team comps when we get to it. They're not going to have like the full characters for the team comps. So you kind of got to know like how to deal with everything, right? So for example, if you saw like these teams here, you would know like what each character does like in terms of arena and how to counter them. I think that's a lot more important than actually just jumping into the comps and giving you guys like brain dead comps like Reno comp to, to I don't know, like fly all the way to 1000. But then after you hit 1000, you're like stuck again. Like, so I think this is probably the way to go. As you can see, I'm only at rank 284. I've peaked at like 97 a couple of days ago, but like that's the best I've done. I'm just in this godforsaken cursed bracket. Like I can't get any further. And I've actually made my way up here to 97 without any mages. And if there's anything to take away from this video, it's that if you have the mages, you're already one. Without further ado, let's get into the actual spreadsheet because that's all I'm about, guys. All right, so let's start with Makoto. So Makoto in Arena, you guys know her. She's got her defense down, like it stacks on top of each other. Usually she howls and then she defense downs on her UB. Now, the way that you apply this to Arena is that she is actually the answer, therefore, to stall and tank heavy comps, right? If you think about it, defense down, you're going to be defense downing big tanks, right? And then you're going to chunk them down and hopefully get through them. So, however, you got to be a little bit smart when you're using her. Like there are a lot of scenarios where she just like kind of instantly dies or like she just gets cucked by like a Maho or something. So the first instance to keep in mind is like the Maho. If the enemy team has a Maho and your Makoto is in position two, it's, you know, like unless you know the comp, like it's more than likely not going to work. But you guys who don't know, Maho blinds position two and Makoto is a very, you know, a very common candidate to occupy the position two spot because, you know, tank and then position two Makoto. She's quite far up in the front. That's why this matters. Another big counter to Makoto is Hatsune. Hatsune just fires off like laser beams at the highest physical attack unit. In a lot of cases, it's Makoto. For me, I think my Makoto has like 2.5k attack. Like that's that's insane. That's actually a really a large amount. Most other units have like 2, 2.2k or something, but Makoto, like she's going to get cucked by the Hatsune. So she's good. And if you're dealing with like stalls or tank heavy comps, like definitely consider her. Like she will destroy that Kuka or she will mow through like anything that isn't Miyako. However, she does need to be like adequately protected for her to be able to perform. Next, we've got Jun. And to be honest, I'm a little bit, a little bit disappointed with the way Jun performs in arena. I thought that she would be a little bit more like tankier, but like, you know, okay, guys, like she is still quite tanky, but she's no Nozomi. She's a really good generalist tank in that she's got pretty good physical defense and magic defense and some pretty good HP too. But, but like I said, for some reason, mine has been melting if she is the first in line. If she does have some support, however, I don't know, like a Miyako or a Kuka or Nozomi or something like, she is actually really good and you could definitely consider using her for the tank busting as well. And why do I say that? Because of the defense down. If you're using like a multi-tank setup, like a Tamaki stall or some kind of stall comp, like it's a little bit unfortunate that her UB, like it requires other people attacking her for her to actually regenerate HP. And why it's unfortunate is because she's usually standing behind like Kuka, Nozomi, uh, Miyako. But otherwise, I think she's quite a solid generalist tank and you can probably like put her and pluck her down anywhere. Next, let's talk about Monica. So Monica, uh, Monica is so good. So for you guys who don't know, the Defenders actually get a one frame bonus. So what that means is that if you have two identical comps, so if you're attacking with an identical comp, to the defender's comp. The defender's comp will actually win out because they have a one frame advantage. There are numerous ways to overcome this, such as action speed and like Lima's delayed start. But Monica herself, if you read her skill, she gives 50% action speed for the first 20 seconds. This is crucial. A lot of the times this really helps the tank busting or like destroying the enemy Miyako. Another example is the Nozomis, right? If the enemy also has a Nozomi and you've got a Nozomi, then the enemy Nozomi will typically stun yours first. However, if you have Monica or Kokoro or whoever, like some action speed, then your Nozomi will stun first. A lot of the times this might like disrupt or this might mean the difference between their tank falling first or your tank falling first. Otherwise, she's just got a whole lot of other utility like a uh, single target stun. Like it's pretty good. I think 1.5 seconds disruption. Like it's pretty annoying to be honest. And on her UB, I think it's like the most lackluster part of her kit. It's just some AOE physical damage. Although this is actually really important later when I'll show you one of my comps. Hatsune, Hatsune, Hatsune. So if there is one unit you want for arena, it's Hatsune. Hatsune just brings so much to the table. She has big AOE damage on her UB. Mad 
magical damage. If you guys have forgotten, remember that magical damage cannot miss. And as I mentioned with like the Makoto example, she targets the highest physical attack unit. A lot of the times, again, this could be the Makoto or whoever it is, right? But more often than not, the highest physical attack unit is typically the enemy's carry or your own carry. There are a lot of times where my Makoto just melts and I always forget to take her out because of the Hatsune or to cover her somehow. She also features a targeted stun, which is, man, that, that carry, that enemy carry is just not going to be doing anything, to be honest. She's just really good right now. However, one of the key things is that she is not always the only answer to Miyako because like I said, she targets the highest physical attack user and that that is pretty much never Miyako. So therefore, you actually need other answers to Miyako, which is actually Anna, who's our next mage. So Anna's a little bit similar to Hatsune, not really. Like she's just pretty much a glass cannon, big kamikaze damage. So for you guys who aren't familiar with her, she does like big AoE magical damage and then she kind of like drops dead. Like her defense goes to zero and then pretty much the next attack she like dies. So like I said before, Hatsune can't deal with like Miyako that effectively, but Anna can because Anna is going to be chunking the front line, right? So typically the Miyako is at the front. So Anna is just going to be pounding away at that boy. I mean, that pudding, that pudding. The Kamikaze attack, I'm not really a big fan of it. It's like when she drops below 10% HP, she'll pretty much do like massive, massive magical damage to the enemy team. But a lot of the times, it's really hard to actually get the Anna down to like below 10%. Typically, you deal with Anna with like a Tamaki and like Tamaki just like chunks her and like you know, two or three hits her, right? And two or three hits is not going to land you into that 10% threshold. Next, we've got Jita, who's probably like one of the most straightforward physical attackers in the game <laughs> and massive protagonist vibes. She does really big physical damage, but that's kind of it. She doesn't really like offer any utility. In terms of clan battle, she is a queen, but for arena where utility really, really matters, she doesn't really, she does, just doesn't really offer much. And on top of that, she's very selfish as well. She doesn't have any like buffs to share. She doesn't have any like, she doesn't give anything. She only takes, right? However, with that in mind, you can definitely consider her for like, comps like tank busting. Like, you know, if the enemy has like cookers or if it has like anything that's not Miyako up the front, you can definitely use a Jita to break through. Nozomi. If there was any one character that was most used, it'd probably be Hatsune and then Miyako and then maybe Nozomi, something like that. But Nozomi is just like so freaking good, right? She is she is a generalist tank. She's got a heal, a stun, a taunt, a attack buff. Like she can, she can do everything. For me, for example, like for Princess Arena or something, like she is usually on the team that has to deal with the hardest team. Also because she's so easy to get via dungeon coins and like I have her at five stars now, right? She is a lot of the time could be the solo tank and an answer to like those store comps. If you, if you think about it logically, a store comp is pretty much a comp that is full of defensive units. But what that means is that you should have as much DPS as you can to tear it open. Normally, Nozomi is enough to be that wall between their team and your team, and you can just let your DPS do all of their pounding on their team. With all that being said, there's a little bit like less synergy around her and more about just being a very solid like standalone character. She's got the AoE heal, she's got the AoE stun, she's got the AoE attack buff. Like You can kind of pretty much like drop her in any comp and she will work. So next we've got Saren, who's a very, very interesting character because of her TP boosting mechanics. There are actually a lot of like very interesting comps that she creates, like the Ninon fan or like somebody did a Shiori comp against me actually and I lost to it. Pretty much the principle for Saren is that if you need anyone that needs juicing for their TP or for their UBs, Saren is your gal. However, if you're going to do this, you do need to kind of build the team around it. So you need to make sure that Saren is the closest to that unit, right? So that means that you have to actually put units that are really far away. One example of this is the Tamaki and Saren combo, right? Tamaki and Saren and then Makoto and then Shiori back there to make sure that the Saren does not boost the like the, any of the other people aside from the Tamaki. One mistake that I was making early on was I was doing Tamaki, Saren and Kokoro. I didn't realize that Saren was actually juicing the Kokoro but yeah I guess the weakness of that is that the positioning could get a little bit annoying and it just really doesn't like you got to really build around it but the idea is like really there like if you do have an idea like you know basing a comp around a particular character I think Saren could could definitely be an answer to that. Reno, I would call her the, like I said here, premier AoE physical damage team of one of the most optimized team comps in Arena. Granted, Reno comp doesn't really work like after the 1Ks or like the 500 ranks. Well, honestly, she does, if especially if people don't know how to deal with it. Outside of her comp, she is just like a standard AoE physical damager and that's like okay, except for the fact that she charges like so slow. Unfortunately, I feel like she just takes way too long to charge and by the time that she actually gets it, her, the rest of her team might be dead. Without 
that being said though people have built the reno comp the reno cannon i think some people call it like so it consists of like reno yuki uh wh whoever else but the idea is that everyone is juicing reno and reno gets her ult super fast and then blows up the enemy team not only that but there's also like aoe defense downs and this and that supporting it i'll get into that when we get into comps but otherwise as a standalone character she's very selfish and she doesn't really like she pretty much only shines when she's actually in an environment where she is supported shizu has a lot of utility but she's in a really odd position to use it despite this though you need to know her utility and that is that she is an answer to the physical based comps right because she has an aoe shield that shields all of your people against physical attacks in addition to that she actually also does give herself a physical shield when she ubs and to top it all off she also heals targeting the lowest hp ally so again she's in a little bit of an odd position but i have seen some people actually like run a sarin in the front and that means that they have no front characters and then a whole bunch of characters in the back i mean if you'd like to entertain the idea i'm pretty sure you can make it work maho the tamaki bait so just by existing she pretty much can eat like two maybe of like tamaki's ubs and this really kind of helps out right because that means that the enemy tamaki is completely focused on the maho but is unable to kill her with the first ub that means that as more time goes on that tamaki is more than more threatened right in addition to that though she is actually packed with utility she's got a blind on her skill too i think where she blinds the position 2 character. What this means is that if you see a Kaori or a Jita or a Makoto on the position 2 of the enemy team, Maho is one of the answers. On top of that, she also has a single target heal and a TP boost for the entire team. So these are these are really it's just really great packaged all up in Maho. And in addition to that, as if she couldn't get any better, she also gives a magic attack buff and a physical defense buff. Like, honestly, that's a lot of utility in one character. However, the weakness of her is that if everyone dies, she is useless as hell. All right, we got Ninon next, which is a little bit interesting because Ninon also excels in physical AoE attacks. So this is very, very similar to Reno, where Reno, you know, she charges up her cannon from the back line. However, Ninon is sitting in the middle. What this does mean is that she is more susceptible attacks. She is way more vulnerable and there is a chance that she may not get her Yubi off before she dies. Again, people have come up with a very specific comp like Ninon, Yuki, Mitsuki, uh, Saren and Lima, something like that. AoE defense down on the enemy team, juice up the Ninon and make sure she gets her Yubi off as fast as possible. Again, a great tool to actually bulldoze your way to like the top 1000 or top 500, depends on what kind of brackets you're in. But there are again, a lot of answers. Honestly, there are answers to every single comp. You just kind of like need to try and find it. And similar weaknesses to Reno, she is a superstar when enabled, but kind of average when she is uh, alone. Next, we've got Io, who has some pretty interesting abilities. Actually, she's like one of like, in terms of ability, she's probably one of like the cooler characters in my opinion, but unfortunately she's just not that strong. So on her UB, she's got an AOE charm and on one of her skills, she gets a TP absorption. If your team is really strong and Io manages to like get her UB off, like they'll be like chunking each other. However, honestly, a lot of the time, I would argue that it's much less of a problem than like say Anna or Hasane. And to top it off, she does okay damage. She could be that unit that, you know, helps you take down the enemy Miyako, but but she really isn't putting the melt in Mage Melt. All right, Akino is a really funny one, and I think that her biggest asset, and I'm I'm kind of guilty of this, right, is that people know that she is trash. And what that means is that people underestimate her, right? And she is like, she's traditionally an attacker. However, I would call her more a bruiser because she is surprisingly tanky. And to be honest, it's even kind of like low-key deceptive, right? You know, there are a lot of times where like, you know, I get through the tank and I see Akino I'm like this is a breeze and then Akino like she holds the freaking line and honestly at that point I deserve to lose but otherwise she is just a solid damage dealer there's not too much going on I think she's got an AoE heal otherwise not too much utility remember that she is a three star natural so that she will get more stats than the two star or one stars but other than that I'm not sure she's really you know like that good like she's okay she's okay but usually if you have space to put Akino you can always put someone else in I guess so guys those are the three stars this video has gone way too long I, i'm a little bit sorry for that but next video like or one of the videos after you know i'll go through the two stars i'll go through the one stars and i'll go through a lot of more of like you know the fundamentals and the team building and stuff i think that's a lot of information to digest because like you know each of these characters they all have some kind of utility for something at the start of the game i was like makoto she's not going to do too well for arena because you know like she all she has a defense down but why didn't it occur to me before that defense down is for busting now over tanks man go away let this digest have a think about you know what all this means because like we'll get into to the actual team building very very shortly otherwise i'm gonna wrap it up there this is a long ass video and i hope it does not get much longer let's go with the secret message uh 
it's arena time, baby. I know I haven't talked about arena too much, but like, like you guys know, like I'm not actually doing that well. Like I'm doing all right, especially with no mages. But yeah, I would really appreciate it if you could drop that secret message down in the comments below. It tells me that you've made it to the end of the video. For me, I really appreciate that you guys watched the end of the video because I put a lot of work into them. And with that being said, I think we can wrap up the video here. If you've enjoyed this video or this video has helped you, consider liking, subscribing, following, whatever it is. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.